These were the scenes across Gaza and the West Bank as the Bahrain conference got underway. Thousands of Palestinians protested and staged a general strike against a plan, they say, attempts to buy them off. Thousands of miles away in Bahrain, Jared Kushner called on the Palestinians to accept his vision, one he dubbed the opportunity of the century if they want peace. He said the $50 billion economic support plan would create a brighter future for the region. For a moment, imagine a new reality in the Middle East. Imagine a bustling commercial and tourist center in Gaza and the West Bank where international businesses come together and thrive. Imagine the West Bank as a blossoming economy full of entrepreneurs, engineers, scientists and business leaders. The Palestinian people. But in the audience was no Palestinian delegation. They'd boycotted the meeting, having rejected the plan from the start. Instead, there were Arab finance ministers and international business leaders, the people the United States is soliciting to foot the bill. Kushner says his proposal could create a million new jobs and slash unemployment, helping to bring peace to the Middle East. But the Palestinians insist there can be no economic solution without a political one. We are here also to send a message that we will not be deceived by the so-called economic plan. There can be no economic solution as a substitute to our freedom. And second, how can we have economic development when we cannot control our borders, our import, our export, our free market, our freedom of movement? Washington says the political portion of the plan will follow. But until then, Palestinians say Kushner's proposal is meaningless. Here in the West Bank, Palestinians burned an empty casket. It reads, deal of the century, born dead. Our correspondent Oliver Salat is covering developments from Washington. He has more details on Kushner's proposals and Palestinian objections. Jared Kushner's plans come as a radical change for the Middle East peace process. No two-state solution, but instead lots of money essentially silencing the Palestinians for a prospect of wealth and development. The plan sounds reasonable. $50 billion in direct investments, a million new jobs within the next 10 years for an area that is suffering from unemployment rates of above 50%. But there are questions to be answered as well. Number one, who is going to pay for all that? And without their own state, Palestinians feel as second-class citizens. So for them, the proposal comes as a no-starter from the very beginning.